This is Jake Ely. Anthony Esposito. Darren James Smith. Phil Verone. From Red Dragon Cartel. And that, and that, that, and that just happened. It's been a long journey, man. Patina's out. It's been, what, four years, uh, really, in total, for yeah. this album to kind of come to fruition if you're looking at when the last album was out. Yeah, I mean, we started, we wrapped up the last tour 2015. We started writing for about a week, and then we shut it all down so Jake could re take a year to renegotiate all his management agreements and uh, partnerships and recording contracts, and finally, it took a year after that, and then so we've only recorded about a year and a half on this <laughs> only a year and a half only a year and a half but it's where I mean we we love it and it's so special to us and we we gladly take another two years to make it that good you know um well the the, the music was written before any lyrics and melody were written so it was I just went oh, it's going in the right direction but you never know until it's done and uh, and once I heard it done I knew that we had something it's just you know it's hard to believe because it's it, it's such a it's such a wide diverse album you know like it's there's something on there for everybody yeah. this record has been and is the best drumming I've ever done and playing with these guys are the best players I've ever played with and the most I've learned in the studio so it's been a, a very uh, a really cool ride in that regard yeah. um, the whole process even though it took two years it's like well if you can if you can wait two years this is the record you put out you know it feels like family it feels like everybody involved uh, can contributed and uh, and it's more old school I'm just an old school guy I you know I'm 62 I'm not I'm not fucking changing yeah. and everything I do is old school I'm just happy that there are people that appreciate it and come out and uh, you know are, are supporting us with this record because it is a good record it's a good record. Grammy nomination? I don't know. <laughs> but he'll go to the parties. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, uh, when we talked last time, uh, Jake said a lot of twists and turns, a lot of stuff that you might not uh, expect coming from him, and the fans are just eating it up. They're reveling in the fact that it's so diverse and, and, and eclectic. Um, the bass playing how did that how, how did that figure into it because you I mean you know you grew up playing uh, you know being trained on on jazz correct but well, punk and jazz yeah. but I mean playing with Jake he's so musical and like 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 I said before when we first spoke it's like we're just trying to get what's in his brain onto tape you know and with him I was always asking what are you hearing what do you think I should be doing should I be moving should I stay should I drive should I walk should I how do you should I slide what do you hear in there? And he's so musical. He's such a conductor that that he he made me a better player on this record. Like he gave me the room, and then I would experiment, and 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 then you know he would say whether it's crap or not. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it was it was definitely a it's a very team effort with him at the helm. You know, like everything starts and ends with Jake, and and uh, he has the bass approach to play with a guitar player that's not such a one-trick pony. Like, he's so diverse and good at so many things that it lends more openness and spots for you to play bass in different ways, you know, which is nice. It was refreshing at this point in my career that I could still grow a lot by working with someone as talented as he is, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, that's what I liked about it. Everything's got different flavors, um, but it somehow sounds it sounds like it all belongs together. Uh, you know, I'm a very like uh, don't kid yourself. I I'm fully aware of how lucky I am, and you know that I had this job uh, twice, <laughs> and uh, I am a very lucky man. And uh, you know, I you're right. I mean, I was in my late forties when we started this record, and now I'm in my mid fifties. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, but it's been a crazy ride, and uh, the record was it was made because everything Jake does is brilliant. You know, like let's be real, he he writes great songs, and and it was just the sum of the parts. You know, Anthony is is incredible engineer producer, his son Tyler, um, and then Phil Verone came along. It just he just it just completed itself somehow. Somebody up there wanted us to make this record, and whatever whatever uh, was in, uh, you know, I'd like to take the. You know, I like to take the you know credit for it, but it was just the sum of the parts. We all uh, something happened and we got 
either lucky or Jake's a genius. No, for sure. And even in, in my mind, um, you know, we play in front of a musician crowd too. So um, they expect us to be good. You know, Jake has that, that resume, that, that pedigree where, you know, if you're playing with Jake, you got to be great. Yeah. And I remember um, right before the tour started, I was at a rehearsal, pl at my rehearsal place in Vegas, and I was carrying, I put a big set list together and it had Badlands on it, all the songs we were playing. And this guy was just outside smoking a cigarette that I didn't know. And he goes, uh, oh, Badlands, we in a cover band? And I go, oh, something like that. <laughs> and he goes, uh, and then the guy sitting next to him like that knows me is like, uh, he goes, no, he plays with Jake E. Lee. And the guy goes, oh, you must be great, like that. And it just got me nervous. Because <laughs> I never really thought about it yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. that's what people expect. And the band is playing great. This, yeah. this tour, like I said, you know, promoting the new record, uh, where I'm supposed to be a legacy act. Mm. Uh, I don't like that title. <laughs> I don't want to be a legacy act. Uh, and I, I get it. I get it. If I go to see ZZ Top, I want to see LaGrange, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, if Billy Gibbons decides he doesn't want to play LaGrange that night, I fucking totally get it. Yeah. You know, he's still Billy Gibbons. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, everything's old school. I, I still play loud on stage. Um, and, uh, yeah, I it's it's it feels very familial. You guys put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into it. How how satisfying is it to get out on the road and to present it uh, to a live audience and blast it from the speakers in a live venue? Well, we kind of took a different approach with the live thing, where um, on the record there's a lot of layering of guitars and a lot of background vocals. Um, for live, we completely stripped it down. We wanted it balls in your face, kind of like just bass, guitar, drums, and Darren down the middle singing by himself. And um, the, the songs actually come, come across stronger and more intense live than they do on the record. The record is more developed and, 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 and uh, different nuances and ear candy pops out. As you, the more you listen to it, it kind of grows. Um, but live, it's just in your face, you know, zero to 100 immediately you know it's great and, and as a co-producer and a producer yourself um, whenever you're getting an album putting it together do you look for those opportunities to say man this would be a great song live so it needs to make it onto the album or do you say you know what we've got the time in the studio so we want to put the layers in there whatever whatever it sounds like live what's that uh, what's that back and forth in, in your head as far as that goes well we wrote the record as a band playing in a room mm -hmm. so we knew that it would it would transfer live easily because it was written live more or less but when you're in the studio you're, you're thinking about more of, 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 of a moment lasting forever and and people are going to be able to revisit that moment over and over and over whenever they press play whereas live it's all about that m moment that initial contact in that in that 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 gut guttural response and then it's gone um, except for all the people that hold their phones up and record it and throw it on YouTube then it lasts forever but but we, when, you, when you're going for a record you're kind, you're kind of looking to create something that's going to remain interesting and remain special and remain good f over a period of time you know yeah. so that's what we try to, to go about doing you know and we're having a good time on stage and I love these guys and we're, we're when you see the show you'll understand um, no matter what goes on in the bus and we've had breakdowns and craziness during the tour that 90 minutes on stage is like what we live for and we're having a blast I mean we're just having such a good time and it's very loose and it's very fun and I think fans are kind of like shocked that it's that fun <laughs> and loose you know like there's no like you know intro music you know in these these breaks where I remember in my bands would be like okay three songs and then you talk this is just like jake comes on we don't even know when we're going on like there's a set time and jake will come over and go all right you ready and yeah we'll go on and just walk on and start playing and i think it's fun this way you yeah. know yeah 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 you're not trying to prove anything we're just a bunch of you know older guys that are having some fun playing some rock and roll oh no that's 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 the reason i'm touring is uh you know make new music and then to be able to do it live in front of an audience most times most nights <laughs> <laughs> but to be able to play it live anyway, um, yeah, that's that's why I do it. I don't do it for uh, the money because there's not really that much money to be had on the road anymore. And a lot of my peers do it to be in the spotlight, you know, 
because they like the attention. I don't. I don't like the attention. I. I just. I just rather shy away, but uh, it's it's purely for the music, and that's uh, the album was done that way, and we're touring to support that album, and it's all about the music. Mm-hmm.